Fairy circles are not to be confused with fairy rings, which are mushrooms that grow in otherworldly looking halos. Here at the most famous church here in Lalibela, St. George's Church. Beyond this visual spectacle, scientists are warning that something much more profound could be happening underneath. Africa is the second largest continent in the world, home to around 18% of the world's population. So, if there's a chance you'll make any weird finds, there's a good chance they'll be in Africa. From mysterious elephant deaths to old rock art, here are 20 unsettling discoveries in Africa nobody can explain. Number 20. Mysterious Elephant Deaths Elephants don't die for no reason. They die from attacks, poaching, old age, and illness. So when hundreds of elephants started dying in mysterious circumstances, it makes global headlines. Africa faces an unprecedented crisis. Mysterious death of elephants, 400 and counting, in Botswana. As summer came to an end north of the Okavango Delta in 2020, savannah elephants started stumbling, staggering, and walking in circles. Eventually, they started collapsing and dying. By March 2020, at least 44 elephants had died. By the middle of June, more than 350 had died across a 3,000 square mile region. As January 2021 arrived, the death toll had risen to 450. Concerned conservationists were eager to get to the bottom of the problem, especially as African elephant numbers are already plummeting. We used to have at least one million of them in the 1970s, but decades of ivory poaching, human confrontations, and shrinking habitats saw that number drop to just 415,000. Finally, Botswana authorities determined what was killing the elephants. Cyanobacteria neurotoxins. They believed that the poisons released by algae in bloom in stagnant water were attacking the nervous system of elephants. However, outside experts aren't so sure. They believe their evidence was unreliable. If the cyanobacteria had killed the elephants, why didn't other animals drinking from the same water holes drop like flies? We might never have any conclusive answers. Now it's time for the star topic. Locals of a remote village in Africa alerted the authorities to what happened to be an unknown animal species lurking around their homes, leaving damage and destruction in its wake. It looks like a dragon, and this discovery in Africa scares scientists. No one knew exactly what it was, but they had no other option but to put it to sleep to find out more. What do you think it is? A dragon or some other kind of animal? Comment down below with the hashtag StarTopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that being said, let's keep things moving. Number 19. The Skeleton Coast It won't take you long to work out why the Skeleton Coast is often called the Gates of Hell and the Land God Made in Anger. It's the northern part of Namibia's Atlantic coast and is a highly inhospitable area. On its coast, the Benguela Current causes dense ocean fogs throughout the year, and winds constantly blow from land to the sea. This area also sees minimal rainfall, typically no more than 0.39 inches or 10 millimeters per year. The beach is also not somewhere you'd go to sun yourself since there is constant heavy surf. It would be one of the most uncomfortable beaches you've ever visited. Then there's the access issue. Before we had engine-powered boots and ships, you could get ashore through the surf, but it was next to impossible to launch from it. Basically, the only way to get out of the skeleton coast was by traveling through hundreds of miles of marsh with access via a scorching and arid desert. As awful as it sounds, it's a popular surfing destination. North of Terrace Bay is Skeleton Bay, where a surf camp called Salty Jackal is set up in Swakopmund, Namibia. Number 18. New Human-like Species We knew better than to mess with new discoveries in 2020, a year that was already a dumpster fire. But we did it anyway, and that's when we discovered hominin fossils in Africa that we now know are the remains of a new human ancestor. More than 1,500 fossils and 15 individuals were found in a cave about 100 feet underground in South Africa. It is now Africa's most significant discovery of a single hominin species. 
What scientists are utterly shocked about is the characteristics of the new species. They had a combination of ape-like and human-like traits, like the small brain of an ape, but the ability to walk on two feet like a human. The wrist and finger bones were also more like ours, but the fingers were curved, indicating that they might have been able to climb trees like primates. Their lower limbs and feet appear to be adapted to walking too. Scientists think that the DNA is between 2% and 19% modern West African, with interbreeding happening around 43,000 years ago. They believe their ancestors of modern West Africans interbred with other archaic humans that we haven't yet discovered. Number 17. Giraffes with Crooked Necks as we all know, giraffes have incredibly long necks. They need their long necks to reach foliage, to eat and even compete with other animals. The necks of most giraffes are about 6 feet long and weigh about 600 pounds. And even though they are so long, they only have 7 vertebrae in them, just like us. We know the ins and outs of the average giraffe neck, so when we see one that's a little different, we just know there's something wrong. Philip Briggs from Ambosali in Kenya was visiting the Chayulu Hills in southeastern Kenya when he noticed a fully grown giraffe with a massive kink in its neck. It seemed unbothered by its unusual feature, even though its neck was truly bent out of shape. It's unknown why the elephant had a bent neck, but it might have sustained an injury at a young age or developed a scoliosis condition. However, this giraffe isn't the only one with a bent neck. Amali, a five-year-old giraffe, developed a crick in her neck when being transported from the wild park in Ohio to Tulsa Zoo in Oklahoma. Zoo staff feared the strange crick might never be cured, but they didn't think she was in any pain and hoped it would heal itself naturally. She was able to walk, eat, and move naturally. However, later reports revealed that she had died. She sustained a broken growth plate in her neck, causing damage to her vertebrae. She died not long after being sedated for an x-ray. Number 16. Half human, half dog. A lot of weird and wonderful things have been discovered in South Africa, but an alleged half human, half dog is definitely more on the weird side of the spectrum. Someone captured footage in 2017 showing animals running down a track. There were about three in total, and two of them were 100% dogs. But the third one? Well, most people aren't sure. It kind of looked like a dog, but it also looked more like a human bent down to run on their hands and feet. It was seen running around Limpopo on multiple occasions, and many residents in the area had reported seeing it. The general consensus was that it was half human, half dog. But how could that be possible? Surely it's just a dog with a health problem. But this sighting isn't the first, and it probably won't be the last. In 2021, a man said he had been terrified for a month after being stalked by a half human, half dog monster in the Australian outback. The man who gave the name John was fishing in the bush when he saw the creature stalking him from the riverbank. He took the photo of it and spoke to a few people, and they all thought it was a dogman. Prior to his experience, stories of a half-human, half-dog dated back to 1887 in the US state of Michigan. Number 15. African Rock Art These days, we use pens and paper when we want to draw on something. But thousands of years ago, the earliest inhabitants of our world just etched their pictures onto rocks. In Africa, there are believed to be more than 100,000 prehistoric rock paintings, some of which are up to 27,000 years old. Sadly, many of them exposed to the elements might soon be lost forever, so research teams from universities are trying to find and catalogue them so we at least have a record of their existence. So far, they've documented about 3,000 of them. Some of the rock art is believed to be the oldest religious paintings in the world. At first, researchers thought the paintings were nothing more than scribbles by primitive people, kind of like how we doodle on paper for the sake of it. But in more recent years, they believe they represent their worldviews and faiths. Time is running out to find more about them, and we're now using 3D laser scans and ultra-high resolution photography to create virtual copies. We can then continue researching them and finding out more about primitive people and their ways of life in the future. 
Number 14. Diamond Rush When a herd man dug up a stone believed to be a diamond or a quartz crystal in an open field in Kualathi, South Africa in 2021, he inadvertently started a diamond rush. After the man put out the word to villagers, people travelled from far and wide in search of diamonds. It's believed that more than 1,000 people descended in Kualathi in the KwaZulu natal region, natal province of South Africa, eager to secure some for themselves. According to one digger who discovered a handful of the small stones, it was a life changer for many. He said their lives would change because no one had a proper job. Instead, they performed odd jobs. The father of two said his family was overjoyed when he returned home with his find. Another man who was unemployed said he had never seen or touched a diamond in his life, and his first time was in this open field. According to the mines department, geological and mining experts were being sent to the site to conduct an analysis and collect samples. The provincial government also told everyone to leave the site so they could run a proper investigation. They also had fears that the many people digging could be spreading COVID-19. Soon after finding the stones, people were already selling them for between 100 and 300 rand, which is about, in US dollars, $5.53 to $16.59. Number 13. The Great African Sea Forest The Great African Sea Forest is something truly magical. It's a huge forest of giant bamboo kelp, and the only forest of giant bamboo kelp. It stretches from the shores of Cape Town for more than 600 miles to Namibia's coastline. Kelp is a type of algae, and both split fan kelp and sea bamboo form the underwater canopy of the Great African Sea Forest. Most of this kelp can be seen from the shoreline, with the split fan kelp growing up to around 10 feet tall and the sea bamboo reaching heights of up to 55 feet. Unlike other kelp forests that appear to be moving, shrinking, and even disappearing, this one seems to be thriving. It's a healthy and functional ecosystem, and is home to many exciting sea creatures. The Great African Sea Forest has many benefits for the area, including home shelter, feeding, and nursing for thousands of species, ocean regenerating properties, and CO2 reduction. The kelp also protects the coastline from rising seas and storm surges. However, like all natural ecosystems, this one is under pressure. Ocean mining, poaching, plastic pollution, chemical waste, climate change, overfishing, and a general lack of knowledge and awareness all put this beautiful kelp forest at risk. Number 12. Klerksdorp Sphere Klerksdorp spheres are certainly unusual. They are spherical or disc-shaped objects that miners and rockhounds have found near Ottostall, South Africa, from 3 billion years old pyrophyllite deposits. At a glance, they look like manufactured balls from a sports game or something similar. Such is their uniqueness that many pseudoscientists and reporters have concluded that they are out-of-place artifacts made by intelligent beings. Except that they are not. Geologists believe that they have been formed from natural processes. The spheres are generally between 0.20 to 3.94 inches in diameter, and are either well-defined disks or flattened spheres. After investigations, it has been revealed that they consist of hematite or wollastonite, with some hematite and goethite. Most of the spheres and disks found are ready brown in color, and some are plain red or dusky red. Some also have well-defined grooves and ridges, and some appear to be harder than steel. Honestly, they kind of look like cricket balls, so it's bizarre that they're made in nature. Geologists say that they formed in volcanic sediments or ash, sometimes both. All grooves on them are also natural. Number 11. African Stonehenge when we think of ancient artifacts and structures, we think of Stonehenge. After all, it's one of the most well-known prehistoric monuments dating back about 5,000 years. But did you know, there's something much older than Stonehenge that kind of looks like it? It's sometimes called the African Stonehenge, but it's known as Nabta Playa. It's the very first astronomical site in the world and is believed to be much older than the actual Stonehenge at 7,000 years old. Nabta Playa is about 700 miles from the Great Pyramid of Giza and is the oldest stone circle in the world. 
Like many other structures, it would have been used as a calendar for the seasons and for celebration and sacrifice ceremonies. Scientists think cattle-worshipping nomadic people built Naptaplea to mark the summer solstice and monsoon seasons. It was first discovered by chance by a nomadic Arab guide, Aida Marif, who came across large stone megaliths when crossing the Sahara. The remains of it were lying on the surface. At first, Aidi and the people he was with thought it was a natural formation. But excavations in the 1990s uncovered a circle of stones that seemed to mysteriously align with the stars. Later, the stone circle was found to have once aligned with Alpha Centauri, Sirius, and Arcturus. Some stones also seem to line up with the Orion constellation. Number 10. Eye of the Sahara Nature is a wonderful thing. And if you don't believe me, just look at this Eye of the Sahara. It's also called the Richat Structure, and is a huge symmetrical dome made of sedimentary and volcanic rock. The outermost rings of the huge eye measure around 25 miles across, and it's visible from space. And we only know this because we learned about its existence for the first time from astronauts. It's an extremely remote location in Mauritania, and was seen by two astronauts on the Gemini 4 mission who noticed noticed it by accident. Since then, we've learnt a lot more about it, and have even found stone tools on the site dating back around 1.7 million years. The area where the eye is located experiences persistent winds, which keep the area free from sand. As a result, the many layers of rock are constantly exposed. At first, scientists wonder whether it came to exist due to an asteroid impact, but they now believe it was geologic uplift. Such is its beauty and uniqueness that it is one of the first 100 geological heritage sites named by the International Union of Geological Sciences. Number 9. Fairy Circles Fairy circles are one of those natural mysteries that have baffled scientists for a long time. In fact, there are still multiple theories surrounding how they came to exist, even today. Fairy circles are circular patches of barren, plantless land measuring between 7 and 49 feet in diameter. They are quite noticeable because they are usually encircled by grass. Until 2014, the only known fairy circles to exist were in Namib Desert arid grasslands in South Africa, but they have now been found in Westland Australia's Pilbara area. Studies into the fairy circles have revealed that they go through a 30 to 60 year life cycle and are noticeable when they grow to about 6 feet wide. They achieve their peak diameter at about 39 feet. Once they grow that big, they mature and are slowly taken over by grasses. Proving any particular theory about why and how they exist has been challenging. One of the more favorable theories is that plants organize themselves to access the very little water available. The circular patches capture water, which flows to the outer edges of the rings and allows grass to grow. Other experts believe termites, plant toxins, and radioactive soil might play a part in their creation, but most leading experts don't believe these theories are accurate. The fairy circles in Africa can be found at about 100 miles inland and extend southland from Angola down to South Africa's northwestern Cape province. Most of them are hundreds of miles from the nearest villages, and they have been mentioned in literature since around 1920. Number 8. Baobab Tree Trees are great. We all love trees. I mean, what's not to love? But out of all the trees to love the most, the baobab should be at the top of the list. This African species is an absolute treasure and an icon. Baobab trees can grow up to 82 feet tall with 46 foot wide trunks. People often call them upside down trees because their tangled branches look like roots. But it's not just their size or weird branches that make them special, they have more than 300 uses. They are like the grocery store of the tree world and offer so much to African communities. You can boil and eat the leaves like spinach, giving you plenty of iron. You could also roast the seeds and press them for oil to cook with or make cosmetic products. Alternatively, the roasted seeds are also an ideal coffee substitute. Then there's the pulp. 
The fruit pulp from the baobab tree has six times more vitamin C than your average orange. This fruit pulp can be turned into juice, fermented to make beer, or turned into jam. Even the young seedlings have a purpose. People take the tap root from the young seedlings and eat them like carrots. You can also use the roots to make red dye and eat the flowers. Need something to make ropes and baskets? The baobab tree has you covered there too. The bark is an excellent material for creating goods like baskets and ropes. Parts of the baobab are also believed to have medicinal properties, and you can store water in their hollow parts. Most importantly, they provide shade, which is definitely lacking in some parts of Africa. Overall, these trees are an important source of income for many local communities. Number 7. Ancient Stone Tools Archaeologists do tend to find many stone tools, but perhaps few discoveries are as exciting as this one. Archaeologists in Kenya found what are believed to be the oldest stone tools ever made and used by ancient humans. They date back around 2.9 million years. Approximately 330 stone tools were found at the excavation site in western Kenya on the Homa Peninsula in Nyayanga. The current evidence they have suggests that Homo sapien ancestors weren't the only ones to use stone tools. Instead, other branches of early humans also used them. These tools, in particular, were used to pound plant materials like fruit and tubers, as well as butcher hippos. They were far more effective at crushing and cutting than the canine of a lion or the molar of an elephant. Researchers initially thought the tools belonged to Homo sapiens, but that was before they found fossil teeth. Two large fossilized teeth were found at the site with the tools, which they say belong to Paranthropus, our extinct human cousins. No evidence of Homo sapiens was found at the site. The discovery basically changed everything we knew about early humans and who was capable of what. We now can't be entirely sure who made the oldest tools. Number 6. Floating Villages the idea of a floating village seems bizarre. When most of us picture a floating village, it's something to do with a flood or other catastrophic natural disaster. But in Africa, they are pretty common. In fact, they are found all over West Africa, with the most notable ones being in Ghana, Nigeria, and Benin. When people live in areas with very little dry land, they simply build their houses on stilts above the water and do their business by boat. They don't have to worry about their homes washing away or collapsing because they're built up high. The largest floating village in Africa is called Ganvi in southern Benin. It's situated in the middle of Lake Nokoi and is home to around 45,000 people. But how did this all come about? Well, it depends on who you ask, but the general consensus is that the Tonifu people built the village more than 500 years ago. Before this time, they lived on land and fled to the lake while trying to escape the Dahomey Kingdom's powerful Fon tribe. This tribe was capturing and selling smaller, weaker tribes into slavery. At least one million or more Africans were sold by this kingdom in exchange for goods like weapons. As strong and as powerful as the kingdom was, it had one weakness. The Fon tribe thought a demon lived on Nick Nakoi, and they wouldn't go anywhere near it. The Tofanu people used this to their advantage and decided to build their homes on the lake. This is why the village is called Ganvi. It means, we survived. Number 5. Africa is splitting apart. Africa is an absolutely massive continent, but in time it will become two. That's right, Africa is ripping itself apart. While it will likely take millions of years, parts of East Africa will eventually move away from the rest of the continent with a new ocean forming between the two areas. The breakup is believed to be part of the East African Rift System. This is one of the world's largest rifts that stretches through several African countries like Kenya, Ethiopia, Uganda, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Malawi, and Zambia, just to name a few. As a result of the rift system, the giant African plate will eventually split into two plates, a smaller Somalian plate and a much larger Nubian one. Currently, the two plates are moving apart at just millimeters per year. That was confirmed in a 2004 study. 
It's mind-boggling to think just how different the continent will one day look. In around 5 or 10 million years, there will be a new ocean between the two plates, and Africa will lose its eastern shoulder. A huge sea will also cut off East Africa. Number 4. Deadfly if you ever happen to be exploring the Namib Laukluft Park in Namibia, pay a visit to Deadfly. Deadfly is a white clay pan, which means dead marsh. It's surrounded by some of the highest sand dunes in the world, some of which are a crazy 1,312 feet tall. This unique clay pan comes to exist when the Saushab River flooded after heavy rainfall. When this river flooded, temporary shallow pools were created. These pools encouraged the growth of camel thorn trees. When the climate changed and droughts hit the area, sand dunes started enroaching on the pan, blocking the river from reaching the area. Most plants need water to grow, so trees growing there began to die. Eventually, it just became a barren landscape with nothing more than Sal Sola and Nara, which managed to survive by soaking up the morning mist. Apart from these plants, you'll see the skeletal remains of trees that died up to 700 years ago. These trees are now black due to being scorched by the sun. As the area is so dry, the wood doesn't decompose. Number 3. Lalabella Architecture lovers will be blown away by the town of Lalibela in Ethiopia's Amhara region. This beautiful little town is world famous for its rock-cut monolithic churches. It's also seen as an important site for antiquity, medieval, and post-medieval Ethiopian civilizations. Ethiopia adopted Christianity in the first part of the 4th century, and was one of the first nations to do so. The churches came much later, from the 7th to 13th centuries. These days, the rock-hewn churches are a world heritage site. They're extra special because they were carved from within the earth from what is known as living rock. There are at least 11 of them assembled into four groups, carved into the rose gold mountain rocks and dug into the ground by hand. Number 2. Quenang Ruins Imagine the city or town you live in today being unearthed tens of thousands of years from now. It's a bizarre thought. That's probably what it felt like when archaeologists uncovered the remains of the pre-colonial Tswana capital in South Africa, known as the Quenang Ruins. The site was about 18 miles south of Johannesburg and would have been a thriving settlement from around the 15th century. While we'll never know for sure why this society didn't last, experts think it was abandoned in the 1820s when civil wars broke out, leading to the inhabitants dispersing. But why did we only discover the settlement in recent years? Well, the ruins were well covered by dense vegetation. In the 1960s, archaeologists used aerial imagery to map it out. Google Earth satellite imagery was used to map it from 2012 to 2014. In 2015, the latest LiDAR was used to map it out with laser pulses. This tech enables them to detect the ground and any interfering objects and vegetation. In the LiDAR survey, they found that most of the southern parts of the site were covered in vegetation, while the northern parts were more exposed. Number 1. Great Zimbabwe there are many spectacular structures in Africa, but few will likely grab your attention as much as Great Zimbabwe. It's often described as among Sub-Saharan Africa's most dramatic architectural landscapes. Great Zimbabwe is Africa's largest stone complex built before our modern era, except for the architecture in ancient Egypt, of course. It was built between the 11th and 15th centuries and was inhabited by the largest ethnic group in Zimbabwe, the Shona people, until 1450. The entire settlement encompasses around 250 clay-built royal houses and multi-story clay and thatch homes. At its peak, it would have housed around 20,000 people. Just a few houses have survived long-term exposure to the elements, but we found some incredible things during excavations. Archaeologists have uncovered interior furnishings like elevated surfaces for sitting and sleeping, hearths, and pot stands. But Great Zimbabwe wasn't just a little commodity of houses, it was a thriving city. The inhabitants made a living trading ceramics, beads, and cloth for copper, ivory, and gold. 
We don't know why it was abandoned, but some experts think they simply exhausted all their resources and were experiencing overpopulation problems. Africa is a mysterious place, and so many weird and wonderful things have happened there. Have you been to Africa? Did you discover anything weird and wonderful? Share your experiences in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. We'll see you next time then, folks. This is Jake the Voice Pass signing off. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good one.